So this is going to be the story of Tracy Hunter, a juvenile judge in Ohio who was just sentenced to six months basically for nepotism. All right. It's, she abused her powers. She was indicted on eight counts back in 2014. She was sentenced in 2014. She appealed the decision, right? And after she appealed the decision in 2014, she stood there and it went the whole way to the Supreme Court and they gave a stay of, uh, it was almost like a stay of execution. They stood there and said, you know, we're not going to sit there and lock you up at the moment. We're going to let you run your appeal out, which is honestly kind of insane, right? Like usually that does not happen, okay? She was accused of backdating documents and trying to prevent prosecutors from appealing her decisions against them and improperly used her position as a judge to give confidential documents to her brother, a juvenile court employee who was in the process of getting fired. Now, how was he, why was he getting fired? Because he had punched a child who was in his care. This is Ohio. Yo, I'm be honest with you, Ohio's a fucked up place. The kid may have been completely the fuck out of line. All right, I'll be honest with you. But, you know, in this modern day and age, you can't sit there and, you know, actually, you know, hit somebody. Right. So in October, she was indicted in January 2014, in eight counts. In October, a jury convicted Hunter of a single count related to giving the convention, uh, confidential documents to her brother after he testified in court that she gave him the documents. Of the Hamilton County Juvenile Jail, last year he was fired from his job for punching a juvenile inmate. According to prosecution witnesses, Judge Hunter requested documents, including medical information of that inmate involved in the incident. Well, the supervisors who run the jail testified those were unusual requests and thought it was a conflict of interest. Well, today, Stephen Hunter told the prosecutor his sister gave him the case file just one day before his disciplinary hearing. Um, I, got, I, re I received them. Um, I took them from Judge Hunter. Judge Hunter gave you those documents? Um, to look at the file, yes. And did you give those documents to your lawyer tonight? Yes. She was actually convicted of these crimes, right? And they gave her a sentence of six months and a year's worth of probation, all right? She stood here and filed for an appeal, okay? The Ohio Supreme Court allowed her to remain out of jail while she pursued her appeals. And then <clears throat> she tried to have the judge, Patrick Dick, uh, Dickenlacker, Dicklacker, Dinklacker, <laughs> removed from the case. The Ohio Supreme Court Justice Maureen O'Connor denied this. Right now. After that, in September 2015, her lawyer says that he can no longer represent her. And he says he can no longer represent her because it's a conflict of interest because he also represented the judge in a drinking and driving case or something like that. Oh, it was a fatal crash where uh, two vehicles had struck a woman. And this is Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, in January 2016, the Supreme Court of Ohio upheld her, uh, her sentence. Okay. So, in May of 2016, the U.S. District Attorney Tim Black emergency uh, issued an emergency stay of her sentence and tells uh, Hunter's attorneys that had filed a habeas corpus petition arguing that she didn't get a fair trial because of mistakes by the judge and misconduct by the special prosecutors who handled the case. At a court he hearing, Dinklacker says he uh, calls the stay an overreach by a federal judge. The federal magistrate recommends denying Hunter's challenge to a conviction. Black must make the final decision. Two years after the magistrate's recommendation, Black, in a 26-page um, decision, says Hunter's sentence can be imposed. He says strong evidence against uh, Hunter undermined her claims that the verdict was a result of inflammatory and prejudicial effect of remarks made by a special prosecutor during closing arguments. Now, so, and then Monday, July 22nd, 2019, they actually had the sentencing hearing, all right? Once they finally got to the sentencing hearing, they stood here and they said, you will get a year's worth of probation, all right, and six months in jail. And I'm going to show you some footage of that right now. I know justice gets thrown around a lot, but I think justice managed in this particular case. So the court 
Ms. Hunter orders the execution of the sentence imposed on December 5th, 2014 by Judge Nadel. That is as follows. One year community control, that's non-reporting. Since you will be on community control, I will advise you as I'm required to by law that if you violate any of the conditions of the post of the uh, community control, come back in front of me. I will sentence you to 18 months, the Ohio Department of Corrections. It is a felony of the fourth degree. The conditions of the community control, control are real simple. As indicated in the judgment entry by Judge Nadel, number one, you pay the cost of these proceedings. Number two, you are to do not violate any laws. And number three, you are to do six months in the Hamilton County Justice Center. Credit one day. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Deputy can take her away. So why did this happen? Why was there a full chimp out after a fucking decision to send her to the county for six months? First off, she's going to a female facility, all right? And like, I want everybody to understand, like a female facility is, I don't even know like how to explain what a female facility is like. Um, it's, I, yo, it, it's, it's like basically just going to like, uh, I don't, I don't even know how like it's, it's like the most basic ass fuck it's just a place you go hang the fuck out for six months all right it's like a female facility is not anything like a male facility in any way shape or form like you go to the county as a man it's gonna suck a lot all right because like legitimately you know it is what it is right but going to the county as a female is a whole different animal like it, it's pretty fucking basic you know you just go and fucking do your time read sleep whatever and I mean, nobody goddamn bothers you, you know, might pick up a lesbian lover while you're there, whatever. And I mean, fucking, but yeah, it's usually just out of your choice. It's not the fact that somebody makes you their bitch, right? It's, you know, it's, a, it's a whole different animal. Um, in the county, like, usually the gay shit don't, don't really happen as often, unless you're in, like, a jungle. I mean, which I mentioned the jungle before, which is you going upstate, you know what I mean? In which case, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, well, now you might have to protect your booty hole, homie. You know what I mean? Sleep on your back. It is what it is. But on top of that, they stood here and turned her into this symbol of black women, you know what I mean, who are strong and don't need no man bullshit. I'm appalled. I believe it's a travesty. And my question is, where's the kitchen sink? Everything's been thrown except the kitchen sink. And this has been an assault against this judge since 2010, when uh, everything possible was done. Spent almost $2 million of taxpayer money trying to stop this judge from being seated. When that didn't work, the attacks continue, and hey, one thing I know is the truth is what makes one free. It, right? Because, like, fucking, they stood here and they spent all this money to get this broad goddamn elected in a pretty black district, and she came in with the mentality of, you know, fucking, all these white men are racist and they've been abusing the system forever, which I'm not gonna lie, like, most judges do abuse the fucking system. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. Like, it's rare that you run across a real straight-ass, straight-arrow fucking judge. Like, the vast majority of them, you want them to be fucking lenient. You know what I mean? You want them to have a chance to not be a by-the-book motherfucker. You know, like, you you don't want a judge who goes directly by the book all the time because you're going to end up getting a book thrown at you. Like, that's just how that shit operates. So, you know, you kind of do want that. And the problem is, is that, like, she thinks that, like, all of them are completely corrupt pieces of shit. And she assumed that she could just go in there and be a completely corrupt piece of shit. Didn't even wait for a time in. Didn't learn nothing. You know what I'm saying? You could tell that she's batshit ass fucking crazy just by the look on a motherfucking face. <laughs> you know, that her being dragged out of the courtroom with the fireman's carry. That was fucking hilarious. You know what I mean? That dead weight, dead weight, dead weight. <laughs> Lock arms. Like, man, listen. You know what I mean? You know. And that fat bitch was also arrested who jumped over the motherfucking, uh, jumped over the joint and went to the, went towards the motherfucking bench to fight the bailiff and shit. She was also locked up for contempt of court and assaulting an officer. You know I mean? Which she should be. And she'll probably get longer than the judge did because she doesn't have the judge's fucking resources. 
And I mean, nobody gives a fuck about her and she doesn't have a name. <sighs> and see, this is why it's so hard to prosecute fucking politicians and individuals who are corrupt because they're able to hide behind this bullshit of I'm a black female, I'm a white female, you know what I mean? I'm a fucking elderly individual, you know, I fucking come from, I'm a Native American, whatever the case might be, right? And then, you know, you have to fight their whole group to get them to fucking go to goddamn jail, you know? And you piss everybody off when you fucking lock them up. The reality is, she's a corrupt piece of shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, legitimately, like, yo, if it was your kid that that dude hit, you know what I mean? And, like, the kid hadn't done anything to... To normalize that Which I don't fucking believe To be honest with you You know what I mean But The fact that If a judge stood here And ruled against you In that favor Like say you were up for something And the judge stood here And fucked you by giving You know what I mean The DA Some shit that they weren't Allowed to fucking have You'd feel some sort of Kind of way about it You know And this is Really where the fuck it's at This is really the mentality Of where all this gets down to Like yo look you can't be having individuals out here just abusing their motherfucking power and getting their family members to fuck off of criminal charges all willy-nilly whenever the fuck they want to. That's that's not how fucking democracy works. That's not how our justice system works. That's not how shit set the fuck up. And I understand that, like, black people think there's been a lot of racial inequality. Like, the reality, it's not. You know what I mean? It's not the situation. It's feminism and garbage and bullshit and females' rights, which have really fucked the black community. Because if you have a conversation with an older black dude who's like 50, 60 years old and you talk to him about being back in the 70s and they'll tell you their whole, their family owned blocks of land, you know what I'm saying? And fucking like, yo, they had, they had massive amounts of rental properties and shit and they were on a come up. And then all of a sudden all this bullshit came through with the female rights and the corporatism and all the nonsense and all of it went down the fucking toilet. And the same thing happened to most of the white community. And, you know, we were talking about a movie last night, uh, Falling Down. Which, you know, like, it, it's it's all around the board. But white people aren't allowed to bitch because they're like, oh, man, well, white men got all the motherfucking privilege out of this. I'm like, yo, but 1% of the white men did, right? Like, out of, you know I mean, the 200 million, 220 million, 230 million, 250, 260 million white men in this, white people in this fucking country. You know what I mean? Yo, it was like 1% of those motherfuckers got all the privilege. So like, what, 26,000 of us? You know what I mean? And the rest of us all got fucked. You know what I mean? Like, legit. And that's really where it's at. The rest of us all lost money. We all lost wages. Ended up in debt and fucked up and losing our families and the whole bullshit and our society being in our culture and everything being crushed and destroyed. That's the reality of things. You know what I mean? Like, yo, and we have to have this conversation publicly. You know what I mean? Have this motherfucking shit. And I'm not even anti, like, yo, the 1% gaining the money. It just something has to give something has to fucking change so that the middle class and the lower middle class the working poor you know and i mean can have an opportunity to be upwardly mobile because right now they're downwardly mobile just as a, as a state of opinions a state of facts you know i mean it is what it is you can go oh man you know you hear ben shapiro and uh fucking a couple other people don't like you know fucking this is the one country in the world where if you're born poor there's a good chance you're not going to die poor. you know, And that's not the truth anymore. Like you're taking a measurement from fucking 50 years ago and applying it today. And it's just not true. It is what it is. In the meantime, man, yo, this is Tom Pease of Pinoy News. Figured y'all enjoyed the motherfucking video. Holla at your fucking boy. Peace.